Hey guys, it's me again, and I am back with my very first book review. And of course, it's a music related book. Uh, I'm going to be reviewing uh, this book right here How to Ruin a Record Label The Story of Lookout Records by Larry Livermore. And uh, this book came out just, uh, I believe it came out only a few weeks ago. I think it came out on, in March or February of 2016. Uh, and this one came out on uh, Don Giovanni Records. You can see it right there. Uh, but anyways, uh, after I do my book review, I'm also going to show you my small Lookout Records collection. So stay tuned for that. Uh, so let's get started with the review. Uh, I actually really enjoyed reading this book. I just finished reading it uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, of course, I've been a big fan of Lookout Records for many years. That's the record label where uh, Green Day got started. It's their, first very, their very first uh, record label and the uh, indie record label from, uh, from Berkeley, California, I believe. And uh, Larry Livermore, the author, is actually the, the founder of Lookout Records from uh, the late 80s, and he ran uh, Lookout Records all the way to the early 2000s. So it is the insider's perspective and the insider's story of uh, what happened uh, to look at records and uh, the whole book is basically a collection of uh, stories the uh, chronological stories of um, uh, that that happened to Larry Larry Livermore uh, when when he was running Re uh, Lookout Records, so it's pretty cool because he talks about some stories of uh, when uh, bands were getting started and Lookout Records, of course, uh, is the was the pioneer uh, East Bay uh, record label indie record label from uh, from California, and especially from the late '80s all the way to the '90s. Uh, huge bands came out of uh, Lookout Records, bands like Green Day, uh, Screeching Weasel, Operation I that later became Rancid, uh, Crimshine, Isocracy, a lot of uh, punk rock and hardcore punk bands came out of this uh, really small record label that was basically run by Larry Livermore on his own apartment by himself for, for the very beginning. Later on it became a little bit bigger once it became a multi-million do dollar business and he had to hire a few more people. Uh, but at the very beginning it was a very very small record label. It's kind of unbelievable to think that this small record label uh, got uh, started or started the careers of many very uh, big bands that still play nowadays uh, but anyways uh, the story also tells the of course the golden years of Lookout Records in the 90s when uh, all these bands were selling a lot of records and then the decline when he basically got in trouble or legal trouble with one of the bands and he had to quit from Lookout Records his own the own uh, his own record label that he started from the 80s that he had to basically quit and then after that um, uh, Lookout Records actually closed shop in the late uh, or the early 2000s I believe uh, I think it was in 2012 there where they officially closed because uh, they were just owing too much money and they lost all the royalties that they had uh, or all, all the rights that they have for from the bands that were making money from for them basically so a really cool story I really recommend it if you want to pick it up I would say that the only downside of this book is that uh, if you're not familiar with a lot of those bands, it might take some time to really learn everything because he tells the story and he when he tells the story he mentions the names of bands and um, if you don't know that those names are actually bands that existed back then, you might be a little bit lost. So that's the only downside of this book. Uh, otherwise, a very cool book, if, especially if you're into uh, the punk rock scene of, the, of uh, California in the uh, 90s or if you're just into, into to entrepreneurship or how to run a business, a small business, you might like this book as well. Uh, one thing that I also liked about this book is the cover itself. Uh, it's um, actually drawn by somebody at Lookout Records, I guess, but it's on the same drawing style if, uh, of the cover or the artwork for Dookie by Green Day. I don't know if you, that looks familiar to you, but if you own uh, Dookie by Green Day, this artwork will look very familiar to you. Uh, also, it has a lot of cool pictures. Uh, it's all in black and white, but it has uh, pictures of. Uh, uh, it has a lot of pictures throughout uh, the book of uh, him hanging out with uh, the bands. There's uh, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, and uh, it just uh, has a lot of cool pictures and uh, that go along with the story. So, uh, yeah, a very recommended book. I would give it a four out of uh, four and a half stars out of five if I have to give it a rating. Uh, but anyways, make sure to pick it up if you're into that kind of uh, music.
Uh, now uh, let's go ahead and uh, I'm gonna show you my uh, Lookout Records uh, collection. Uh, like I said, I don't have that many, but I'm gonna show you the ones that I have. Yeah. Okay, so uh, this is my Lookout Records collection and I actually only have one uh, vinyl record from Lookout. I have a handful of seven inch singles and I also have uh, a bunch of CDs as well, so that I'm gonna show you from Lookout Records. And uh, just so you know, if you find a Lookout Records um, CD or vinyl out there, uh, I would recommend that you pick it up because like I said before, Lookout Records doesn't exist anymore. They don't have any of the rights to uh, a lot of the bands that put out music out there or to those albums that they had uh, the rights before. So if you find one in the wild, make sure that you pick it up because they, are, they could be kind of rare now that uh, Lookout Records doesn't exist. Uh, but anyways, let's get started. This one is called, and I showed this one in my last video. Uh, this one is uh, Various Artists. It's a compilation that's called The Thing That Ate Floyd. And this one came out in 1988, uh, of course, on Lookout Records. And uh, this is actually one of the very first releases by them. This is a Lookout Records number 11 release. And this is uh, an early repress of the compilation. This one was repressed in uh, 1992, and the original came out in 1988. And uh, as you can see in the back, a ton of artists, a classic uh, Lookout artist, uh, double record, has bands like, um, let's see, um, Isocracy that I mentioned before, Neurosis, um, has the Mr. T experience, one of my favorites. Uh, Sticky, No Use for a Name, The Lookouts, Crimshine, uh, Operation Ivy, uh, a ton of bands, uh, pretty much all the bands uh, that got started back in the 80s uh, in Lookout Records are there. And actually, uh, I, when I was uh, reading an interview by of, uh, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, he considered this album, this compilation, of one of his most influential records uh, in his career. So, a very cool compilation. I didn't expect too much of it because I'm not a big fan of compilations, but this is actually a very solid compilation. It's a mix between uh, hardcore punk and pop punk uh, bands and songs. And I, met, I showed you this before, a double record uh, on... It's more of, of a marbled orange um, vinyl with the custom uh, Lookout Records label. And what's also very cool about this uh, record is that, I don't, I don't think I mentioned this before, but uh, Lookout Records had two addresses throughout their, their lifetime. Um, one was in Laytonville, California, which was the single bedroom apartment that he had uh, further away in, in Northern California. Uh, Larry Livermore had and then the second ad address came out la later in uh, Lookout Records careers uh, or in the story of Lookout Records where they moved into Berkeley, California. So the initial records that came out from Lookout Records uh, came in with the Laytonville, California address in, in the back of the album and uh, the ones later on came in with the Berkeley address. So the way to identify original presses or at least early presses of Lookout Records is by finding the Laytonville, California address in the back or anywhere in the record. This is actually the only Lookout Records release that I have um, that says the Laytonville, California address in there. Uh, you can see it right there, Laytonville, California and the classic Lookout Records logo. So yeah, very cool to have. I actually found this one at the record store, so I was uh, very happy to find this one even though it's uh, a repress. Uh, anyways, let's move on. Uh, this one is uh, one of uh, the, actually the very first Green Day release. Uh, this is the 1000 Hours EP, and this is the Lookout Records number 17, came out in originally in 1989. This is another early repress, but it actually comes with the Berkeley, California address, so it's not one of the very early represses. All right, up next, um, a few more Green Day uh, releases, but these are actually CDs. Uh, this is uh, one of the first, the, one of the few first CDs that I bought in my collection. Uh, this is 1039 Smooth Out, sla uh, 1039 Smooth Out Slappy Hours. <laughs> it's kind of hard to pronounce, but there it is. Um, and this one is on Lookout Records. Of course, you can't find it on Lookout Records anymore. Yeah, the, the the rights of all the of these albums went out to or were transferred to uh, Reprise Records, so um, you can't find uh, any more Lookout uh, Green Day CDs anymore out there. Um, yeah, this one is uh, Look at Records number 22 and from 1991. And I'll just show you the inside. 
and uh, next is also another Green Day CD. Uh, this is their second album, Kerplunk, from 1992. Also on Lookout Records, release number 46. Uh, there's the inside. I think I've showed this one before in my uh, Green Day collection video. Anyways, uh, look at records over there with the Berkeley address. Uh, next, uh, I also have, uh, let's see, let's go in chronological order, I guess. And this one is uh, a band that I mentioned before, The Queers. And this one is Lookout Records number 66 from 1993. Uh, if you haven't checked out this album, give it a try. This album is awesome. In my opinion, this album represents the entire uh, lookout sound from the 90s. Classic pop punk music from uh, California uh, from the 90s. Great, great album. Super catchy. It's just a fantastic album overall. There's the back. Uh, also with the Lookout Records logo, logo with the misspelled Berkeley, California address over there. Uh, there's the inside. Yeah, like I said, a fantastic album. This is actually one of my favorite albums um, from the Lookout Records catalog. Uh, so definitely glad to have this one. Actually, I skipped one. Uh, this one is actually from 1992. Uh, this is Lookout Records number 61 release. Uh, this is Tilt with their untitled EP uh, from 1992. Uh, very, very underrated band. If you haven't checked out uh, Tilt, uh, I'm actually surprised that this, this band didn't go uh, very far in their careers because I think they broke up a, a few years ago, but uh, you didn't hear them becoming very big and uh, they were fantastic. If you haven't checked them out, check out their records on, but check out the records on Fat Records because uh, this release is actually not very good. This is their very first release. It doesn't sound very good. It's, uh, the sound quality is kind of uh, not very, very good. It's very noisy and it doesn't really represent what their real sound sounds like. Uh, but anyways, uh, and also what's cool about this uh, EP is that this really represents on also how uh, Lookout originally uh, packaged the records because it was a very, very DIY effort. They basically did everything with the fans or with the people that worked at Gilman Street or their friends from Lookout Records owners. Um, uh, they basically, it's just a, a printout. <laughs> on a piece of paper, like it looks like somebody just uh, uh, scanned or photocopied um, this uh, the original artwork and printed it out in a record in a piece of paper with the artwork. Very very DIY with uh, the credits in there and um, the record itself on black vinyl with the custom labels. All right, uh, next uh, I also have um, a fairly rare. Um, a fairly rare release because I haven't actually I found this one in the wild in a record store but I actually didn't know much about it until I read the book when I read the book uh, Larry tells the story of how he, he also had his own band the lookouts but he had a side project called the potato men with which is basically a trio of Larry Livermore plus the two other founders of lookout records um, and uh, this one is called uh, on the Avenue I found it for two dollars at the record store. <laughs> Couldn't believe it, uh, because uh, I guess not many people know about this band because it wasn't a big band at all. But uh, it was pretty cool because it's still an original Lookout Records release. It still it still has the Berkeley, California address, anyways. But uh, it's actually Lookout Records number ninety eight, uh, the ninety eighth release uh, from Lookout Records. Uh, next, uh, let's see another. 7 inch single or a 45. This is actually like an EP because it has four songs by again one of my favorite favorite lookout, lookout bands, The Queers. And this one is called uh, Bubblegum Dreams. Like I said, it's a four song EP. This one came out in 1996. And it's Lookout Records number 158. Right there you can see in the bottom. I don't know if you can read it. It's kind of hard to see, but it says uh, number 158 and Berkeley, California address. And uh, this is cool, uh, really good uh, release. It has some classic uh, uh, queer songs like uh, Punk Rock Girls. Uh, if you have heard a uh, song by the queers, you, you probably have heard Punk Rock Girls. It's by far one of the uh, most popular songs. Uh, 
it's a very poppy and catchy tune so it's very recommended and i'm glad i found this one especially the record store out there in the wild because it also has uh one more song the, the last song in the ep is a cover by originally done by the muffs also one of my favorite bands not in lookout but it's one of my favorite bands ever and it's called end it all and this record i would say is kind of rare because i've only seen it once i've never seen it again in the record store or anywhere i haven't even seen it online but there's the black vinyl with the classic uh, queers logo with uh, the angry felix the cat uh, next i also have a few cds by pinhead gunpowder uh, if you haven't heard of uh, Pinhead Gunpowder, you might have heard of them because it's the side project uh, by uh, Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day. And he had uh, a different band, even while Green Day uh, was out there playing uh, gigs, he still played for this band and he released a few uh, releases on, on Lookout Records, even though he, uh, with Green Day, he was signed with Reprise Records. Uh, and this is basically, uh, I will call it a super group because it also has Aaron Comet Buzz, originally from Crimshine. And also has uh, Bill Schneider from the Skin Flutes, which he also has. Uh, uh, the Skin Flutes also have a song in the first compilation that I showed you, and uh, it also has Jason White, uh, which, uh, as you may know, he he plays for Green Day now, and I think he's officially a member of Green Day now. Uh, but anyways, this one came out. This one's called uh, Goodbye Elston Avenue, and uh, this is Lookout number 168, and it came out in 1997. And uh, what can I say about Pinhead Gunpowder? At some points, I may think that Pinhead Gunpowder is even better than Green Day. It's very raw, very fast, very catchy, uh, excellent punk rock band. Uh, if, you, if you like fast Green Day songs, you will like uh, Pinhead Gunpowder. Uh, amazing band, amazing band. And this album is really good, it's one of their best. And I also have uh, this one, this one's called uh, Compulsive Disclosure. And uh, this one came out also on Lookout Records number 258 on 2003. Uh, I really like the cover. Uh, there's the back with a little classic Lookout Records logo. And the inside, I really like the artwork there too. Uh, I would say that this one is way better than Goodbye Elstone Avenue. However, this album is very, very short. I think it's only 20 minutes long, but it's 20 minutes of just pure energy, super fast punk rock songs, uh, very, very catchy tunes, great lyrics. I love all the songs in this album. I don't know if you could, would consider it an EP because it has uh, nine songs. Fantastic album by Pinhead Gunpowder on uh, Lookout Records. Finally, I have one more CD to show you. Uh, this is the band that actually, uh, in theory and according to the book uh, that I just read, was supposed to save Lookout Records from bankruptcy and from closing. Because this is one of the very last big bands that they ended up booking after Larry Livermore left uh, Lookout Records. And this is the Donnas. And this CD is called uh, Turn 21. And this is Lookout Records number 255 from 2001. Of course, they released a few more releases after this one. And uh, there's the back. Uh, there's the Lookout, the changed, I guess, the, the new or the, one of the last Lookout Records logo uh, from, with the Berkeley, California address. You can, probably can't see it. It's very small. And there's the back. You probably heard of the Donnas. Uh, they had, um, after Lookout Records, they went, uh, they, they got hired by a major record label. Uh, they had a few releases out, but after after that, they went nowhere. They went back to uh, their own record label. They didn't, they didn't become really very big, even though they were very good. Uh, I really like this album. Uh, it's not my favorite from Lookout Records, but it's actually a very solid album. Uh, their style is kind of a mix between the Ramones and Kiss, kind of like a hard rock and punk rock rock and pop punk um, an all-female band as you can see uh, very catchy songs uh, if you haven't heard them check out this one it's actually this is the, my favorite album by them they have a really good song called uh, uh, do you want to hit it yeah, that is in this album so if you want to check them out I recommend that song and this album uh, but like I said, it was the band that was supposed to save them. They invested a lot of money in them. They did become big, but it, it wasn't enough to save uh, Lookout Records. 
uh, even uh, what's interesting about Luca Records is that even though they had the rights to the ver two very first Green Day albums when Green Day was at their peak in 1984 and 1994 they, that could still not stop uh, Luca Records to close in and to go bankrupt, which is very unfortunate because uh, it's a label that really uh, got uh, a lot of great bands back in the day. And even to till today, I still uh, have a lot of nostalgia when I think about Luca Records because it's one of the uh, uh, very first indie record labels that I got into and uh, uh, really got the... the uh, the careers uh, started for a lot of the great bands out there uh, but anyways that's all the, my lookout records collection it's not very big like i said i'm still gonna try to find some more out there if i can find them in record stores or in uh, online um, but that's all i have if you have some lookout records that you would like to share i would encourage you to go ahead and make a video or let me know because i'm uh, like i said i'm a big fan of lookout records and i would lo love to see your uh, record collection uh, anyways i hope you like this very first uh, book review that i just did uh, let me know if you have any questions about the book or about any of the of the records that I showed you and uh, have a great day and take care BC. Bye bye